This is really not in this new year and the beginning of the new decade. Some say that the decade starts at the end of 2020. Some at the beginning. It depends on how you reckon time. Um, but with 2020 coming in, the 2020 is going to be some year. And our theme is not proclaiming 2020 as the year of God's truth because uh, every year God's truth uh, needs to be proclaimed. And um, um, God's truth is as true uh, in 18, was as true in 1820, 1720, 1420. Amen. Uh, the first century uh, A.D., so forth and so on, as it is now. But it is, it's never been challenged like it will be in 2020. So it's not the year of God's truth, but it's simply God's truth. Everybody say, God's truth. God's truth. It's God's truth as a goal and as a destination. My goal is to walk in, identify, and live by God's truth. It's God's truth that we seek to identify with in 2020. It's God's truth that we live for and live by. Somebody say God's truth. God's truth that's worth fighting for. Amen. We're going to fight. One of the things I've been saying of late is that one of the problems we have in society is that Christians won't fight. Too many Christians are rollover artists. Just, we just roll over. We play dead. We're, we're too weak. I think it's come from flawed theology. Um, too many sermons have been preached to us about us. God bringing us out. God giving me back what the devil taken from me. You know, we're the center of our universe, you know. The Lord's going to do this for me, and the Lord's going to do that for us. And so we've shifted. We've shifted from what we do for the Lord to what the Lord do for us. And so when people aren't getting what they want from the Lord, people pout. And uh, the current state of the body of Christ is that we're, we're, uh, we're filled with, uh, uh, with weaklings. Amen. If I hear one more sermon about I almost lost my mind, I might take somebody's head off. Um, you ain't almost lost your mind. What do you mean this, the trial made you almost lose your mind? Why would that be? The mm -mm. Bible says there's a peace that passeth all understanding. God said he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. God's truth. God's truth. God's truth. We, we handle things now. I said to my wife, I said, I sent her a, a, a clip. Um, and um, it's, 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 it's well spoken. It's, 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 it's well laid out. It's not a verb split. Um, every sentence is properly conjugated and uh, spoken with, with wonderful eloquence as Oprah Winfrey lays out her religion. She tells who her God is. Um, 
And um, I mean, I've never heard anything more masterfully said, but it is gross wickedness. Gross is the most wicked thing, but it is articulated so well that if you don't have spiritual ears, you won't hear this woman endorse a God and a Savior who is not the God of the Bible. If you're not listening, you won't hear her say in her presentation that I outgrew Christianity. She outgrew God's truth. And in everything that people who think like she does do and promote, that's the ideology behind it. There's nothing wrong with watching the the Dr. Field show and this show and that show, but you need to know, go on and be entertained by them, but you need to know that those shows aren't mere entertainment. Those are worship services. They are peddling a new religion. Have you, you noticed they promote solutions without Christ? Solutions without the Bible. Marital uh, solutions with no scripture. Relationship solving skills, but no Bible. That's because their God is not the God of the Bible. And the truth, their truth, is not God's truth. It's God's truth that we defend. Yes, it's God's truth with regards to the definition of marriage. God's truth on the issues of life. God's truth with regards to human sexuality. You know, there are too many. I, I was... Uh, I was doing a radio interview, oh, about, um, I guess it was two or three years ago now. I was invited to Durham, and uh, that was a, the host of the interview said to me, we, we want you to come, Reverend, and we have a, a rabbi and another preacher and a um, iman and you and we want to discuss issues of human sexuality and I said I'd be glad to and when I got there I noticed that the rabbi the iman and the preacher all talked to each other and had great Camaraderie. They left me sitting over, over in the corner by myself. My little feelings got hurt. The uh, host came in to the green room where we all sat, and he said, by the way, Reverend, we want you to know that all of us disagree with you. And um, um, so when we go on the air, the positions that you take will be yours alone, and we have ours. So now it's four, the imam, the preacher, the rabbi, and the radio, against one. I told them, I think that those odds are fair. It's good. See, because I was armed with something. I was armed. I had God's truth. And the preacher who was on their side, turns out, was a female pastor who was a lesbian. And she made a charge against me 
on the air that was so true. She said, the problem with uh, Dr. Wooden is that he defines human sexuality and the interacting between men and women, he defines them only through the lenses of the Bible. Because I was dumb enough to tell all those educated people that the Bible says that God made them male and female. And uh, the uh, rabbi tried to shake me with his uh, knowledge of the Hebrew language. And he tried, to, he tried to go all the way back into unspoken languages and say that it could have meant this. And it could have meant that. And it could have meant the other. And I told him on there, I don't want to talk about what it could have meant. I want to preach about what it meant. Amen. What it meant. So what's, what's written. When you are armed with God's truth, you don't have to be afraid. Yeah, God's truth. As we talk about these things, let me tell you. In um, 1973, the American Psychiatric Association removed, and I'm, I'm not going to just preach about this, but I have to, I want to lay these things out, removed homosexuality as an illness. I, I still wondered uh, what happened because when it was uh, uh, listed as a, a mental illness and uh, a dysphoria and uh, as, you know, as something that was wrong, and then when they changed it and changed its category, they were still having sex the same way. So I wonder what happened. If it was crazy then, how did it, and it was wicked then, how did it get unwicked if you hadn't changed what you were doing? You can call it something else, but if it's still the same behavior, there's something wrong with that. But in 73... They removed it. In the 1990s, there was a call for tolerance. You remember that? And I told you then that tolerance was not what they wanted. It was acceptance. Back in 1993, the African-American community, when black folk had brains, rejected the homosexual, the LGBT community's attempt to link their battle to ours. Because when they would say, it's like being black, when black folk were thinking, black people said, no way, for there has never been anything immoral about our beautiful color. That there's never been anything wrong with our big noses and thick lips. And our voluptuous women, of which others began to take injections, trying to look like you. There's nothing wrong with you. People laying out in the sun, trying to look like you. Nothing wrong with that. There's never been anything wrong with that. So to compare the way God made a people to deviant behavior, African Americans were insulted. Amen. In 2005, they called for civil unions. And uh, when they did that, I told you then, they didn't want civil unions. They wanted marriage. Raleigh tried to crucify me because they said, who do he think he is? And then in 2015, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, struck down uh, the all states' ban on same-sex marriage and legalized it in all 50 states. And now we're in a day where they choose. The new battle is 
The homosexuals are trying to choose whether or not to accept us. How do you mean? What do you mean? Let show me one corporate executive. I don't want to. One who will publicly say, I oppose same sex marriage on the mic. Show me one sportscaster. One. Show me one athlete, one entertainer who will publicly denounce that lifestyle. They know that if they do, it's a death to their career. They know uh, uh, if it's an artist and he sings against it, he knows he won't sell records anymore. We have allowed the script to be flipped. And now when you go to work, you know you better not say anything. Praise the Lord. If you are a teacher in the public school system, you're scared to answer the child. Uh, if they ask you uh, uh, certain questions about these things, because we allow this to take place because we would not defend God's truth. We were all afraid. We killed our own sermons. We would, before we would speak the truth, we gave so many disclaimers until when we finally said what it is we wanted to say, it had no power. I don't mean to bash anybody. I don't mean to say anything. I don't mean to sound judgment. I don't mean, well, what do you mean? Then when we finally say what we meant, it didn't mean a thing. Now look at where we are today. We're afraid afraid to say certain things. All of this happened because we would not stand for God's truth. God's truth with regard to politics. What is this person for? What are their positions on certain things? How does those positions align with God's truth? What is the platform of the party? Do they align with God's truth? These will be the questions of 2020. We may shout a little later. There is legislation pending that would literally be the criminalization of Christianity. It's called the Equality Act. This Equality Act, if passed, praise the Lord, would outlaw biblical Christianity as we know it. I want you to hear me today. Amen. It's time for us to stand and make a great declaration for God's truth. So the theme for 2020, God's truth is a declarative. It is to declare, to state, to announce openly that our goal, or shall I say it is the will of the God of the Bible, that we, that nothing stands independent of God's truth in our lives. That nothing and no one stands independent of God's truth in our lives. In 2020, there will be a manifold, multiplied push to separate the believer from God's truth. We already see this in the efforts of the Reverend William Barber who not only invited Mayor Pete Buttigieg, presidential candidate, to speak at his church, and, the, and Mayor Pete is married to a man. No one ever thought that you would see a man who is married to a man stand in the pulpit of a black church. White church, for that matter, you didn't think you would ever see anything like that. A man who is married to a man and then gave the man communion. So much for the communion being sacred. 
Paul said that a man ought to check himself, have to examine himself before he takes communion. Well, there is no holy, there is no righteous, there is no biblical way for a man to be married to a man. So therefore, there is no biblical way to give a man communion. And yet, he gave that man communion in his church. And the man didn't get saved. The man didn't accept Christ. Now there is an effort on the same part of this man by using famous blacks of antiquity. Blacks of the past like Langston Hughes. Blacks like Rustin and others who apparently, according to him, were homosexuals. We don't claim that there hadn't been famous homosexuals in the past, but we don't get our morality from uh, past people. We get our morality from the Bible, and we trust God's truth. NBC, uh, NBC uh, and MSNBC newsman by the name of Chuck Todd said something the other day, uh, and um, I just wanted to read it to you. Uh, Chuck Todd said this. He said on, in Meet the Press, he said this about uh, Trump voters. And I don't really care what he has to say about Trump supporters. Uh, people support who they support. But he said this. He said Trump supporters love being lied to. Said they love fairy tales like Noah's Ark. Chuck Todd believes that Noah's Ark is a fairy tale. Now, I wouldn't trust any story that he gives me. Because if he believes that Noah's Ark is a fairy tale, and we get the story of Noah's Ark, from the Bible, then he believes the Bible is fairy tale. And if he believes the Bible is a book of fairy tales, then he believes that God's truth is a fairy tale. Oh my, the lines are clearly being drawn in 2020. Yes, sir, it's a dangerous thing. I mentioned the Dangerous Equality Act. Praise the Lord. And I want to just throw this to you and we're going to move on. And uh, But I want you to hear me tonight. This act that uh, so far the current president said that if it ever reaches his desk, he will veto it. Every one of his opponents said that if they ever get in office, they will sign it. But this Equality Act, if signed into law, it will give supremacy to LGBTQ values over heterosexuality. The Equality Act turns any recognition of the differences between the sexes or any preference for traditional sexual morality into actionable hate. That means they can sue you for it. This bill will put lies into law. It implies that biology is meaningless and that the only thing that matter is how a person feels or thinks. If it's passed in the law, every man in here can declare that he's a woman. And every woman in here can declare that she's a man, despite biology. Now you know that that makes no sense. And yet, this is where we are. This bill will put lies into law. It will cause Christian doctors to have to perform same-sex operations. Churches will have to host homosexual weddings. Christian schools will be forced to hire homosexual teachers. Just to name a few. All of these things are contrary to God's truth. 
I showed you last Sunday, Forky. I showed you Forky last Sunday. It's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Here's Forky. I got him in my hand tonight. Forky is Disney's first transsexual character. Why are you preaching about it, preacher? Because this is what they're trying to drive down your throat. And the Antichrist, it will be homosexual. Daniel says he will not have the desire for women. So when you see this stuff, what you are literally seeing is Antichrist behavior in society. So say, so, well, why you you talk about it? Well, it's on every other commercial. RuPaul is on the cover of Vogue magazine. The new, in many cases, now the new beauty standard is a man pretending to be a woman. All real women ought to be insulted. All of you ought to be. Because I got news for you. I don't care what anybody say. A man, I don't care what he has done, is not as pretty as the ugliest woman. Not to me. Now, maybe some of you brothers may be disagreeing with me. That's what's wrong with you. <laughs> See, uh, but he's a transsexual Disney character. Disney, and the thing about him is uh, they know what they're doing. They've hired psychologists. They know how to deal with the mind. Right. And right on the left foot right. of little Forky is, you see it? The rainbow, the homosexual sign. That's designed, it's to be marketed to toddlers. Right. It's, to, it's marketed to kids. It is designed at an early age. To burn in their psyche a connection between the rainbow and deviant behavior. And to do it in their formative years. Let me tell you something. You're, to this day, I don't care if you're 80 years old. Your uh, opinion on what tastes good is what your mama gave you when you were a child. Amen. And when you taste the food, if it takes your mind back to your formative years, then it's good. When I feel sand between my toes, even as a grown man, my mind goes back to playing in the backyard in my mother's, at my mother's home as a little kid. So the feeling is a good feeling because there's an association between it and something that happened in my childhood. Well, they're trying to build an association early on with our children. And the question is, where are the preachers? Where is the outrage? Why is there not and a, an alarm being sound. You, the devil is trying to rob our children. And the only thing you want to hear about is that blessed in the city and blessed in the field. And the Lord bless my going and the Lord bless my coming. I'm telling you, we're in for a battle. Are you with me today? God made them male and female. This according to God's truth. This socialism push where government is God. Lenin, the founder of socialism, said that for a man to be a true socialist, that man must be an atheist. For the socialists cannot believe that there is a God. The socialists must look to government. Government to solve their problems. Government to fix everything. Have you noticed now? Every time something goes wrong in society, people automatically say they ought to make a law. 
They ought to pass a law to fix this. They ought to pass a law to fix that. Well, let me tell you something. Human laws can't address these things that are going on today. We have made inanimate objects. Animate. <laughs> so the problem is guns. Guns. A gun is an inanimate object. A gun can do neither good nor evil. A gun can't shoot anybody. A gun can do neither good nor bad. A gun has no morals. A gun, a gun is nothing until it is placed in the hands of a person. And depending upon that individual, that gun does good or that gun does harm. Oh, my. So we look to government to fix only what God can fix. And I'm going to say this, praise the Lord, and I'm going to lay hands on everybody here tonight. Uh, isn't it amazing where that we live in a day where the only people in America left who are still saying, government, 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 give me this. Government, give me that. Government, government, government is black people. Not even the Hispanics. As they come in, their numbers have surpassed ours. They're not leaning on government. They're too busy starting businesses. They're too busy working, working for themselves. We're the ones still uh, uh, protesting government. We're the ones who hear these loud voices saying that the government ought to do this and the government ought to do that. And, and people who are able-bodied, able-bodied, I'm talking about able-bodied now, nothing wrong with you, able-bodied should be able to get government help to do this and government help to do that. But what about what God's truth says? 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10 says that if a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. As never before, we can't just look to government. We must look to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why is the world trying to separate us from God's truth? The answer is clear. The answer stares us right in the face. The answer cannot be denied. Praise the Lord. The answer defeats them. And here's the answer. The answer is... Because God's truth is the instrument of sanctification. Praise the Lord. God's truth separates the believer from sin. God's truth moves us into the place where we need to be. Our text says, sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctify them means to set apart. The word sanctify uh, means uh, if, if something is defiled, it means to make hollow. To hollow a thing is to make it clean, to make it holy. And one writer said to be sanctified means that one must separate themselves from the world. I said to the young lady who sang last night, oh, she did a great job, young Tyson. I said, you have a gift. You're an excellent singer. I said, but don't you let the voice, don't you let American Idol, don't you let the world gobble you up. They look for our better voices so that they can taint them. And uh, I was so moved by, uh, we were talking last night, and somehow the conversation got on what she wore when she performed the night before at uh, another church. And someone said to her, at that church, girl, you are dressed up like a church girl, even though we were at church. And she sang at church. And they commented that she was dressed like a church girl, even though she was singing at church. And she said something. We were all back in the back. And she said, you know, a bishop, and uh, I, when I put on my dress to sing that night, she said, I held it up in front of the light to see if uh, you could see through it. 
So she said, that night, what they didn't know was, I didn't have on a dress. She said, I put on two dresses. I had on two skirts because I wanted to make sure nothing was seen that shouldn't be seen. I said, look at that girl right there. Uh, when the last time you heard of something like that? We live it in a day now where folk are trying to let it all hang out. But I found out that sanctification, I can't get an amen, sanctification still works. Hallelujah. When we get sanctified, we become meat for the master's use. Somebody praying for me. Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I want to read this to you. Praise the Lord. Because as we hear the word and we apply the word and we obey the word, then the word makes us meet for the master's use. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21 says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified. And meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. You see, you have to qualify to be used of God. Meet, that means fit for the master's use. And the master can't use us the way that he wants to use us unless and until we get sanctified. There has to be a separation between the church and the world. One radio station had a discussion not long ago, and their goal was to bridge the gap between the church and the world. Well, the, that is against the Bible, for it is not the will of God to bridge the gap between the church and the world. It is the will of God to increase the gap between the church and the world. There ought to be a difference between holy and unholy, and clean and unclean. Oh my, as never before, praise the Lord, we've got to let the Lord give us power and authority for the mission. And the only way we will have this power and authority is that we, we've got to be sanctified. Oh, there's some sanctification that's going to take place in 2020. Amen. I want to say that God's truth has been given to us in three different editions. The first edition of God's truth was given to us through his son. The Bible says in John 14 and 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The second edition of God's truth was given to us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, but when the Comforter is come, whom, the, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. John 15 and 26. And then the third edition of God's truth is the Word of God. Jesus said in our text, sanctify them through thy truth, Thy word is truth. The word of God is God's truth. The Bible is God's truth. Not that your word contains truth, but thy word is truth. The Bible doesn't merely contain the truth of God. The Bible is the truth of God. And this is why the devil is trying to separate us from the Bible because he knows that if he separates us from the Bible, he separates us from our power. What a declarative statement. Even during his earthly ministry, Jesus put a premium on the written word of God. He called the Old Testament God's word. Praise the Lord. Jesus said in Matthew's gospel, chapter 15 and verse 6, and honor not his father and mother, he shall be free. Thus you have made, speaking of the Old Testament, the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions. Jesus called the Old Testament the commandment of God. 
In Matthew 22 and 31, Jesus said this, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, you have, have ye not read that which is spoken unto you by God? Jesus called the Old Testament God's word. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke of the Old Testament characters. Yes, he did, as such as Jonah. He spoke of a Chuck Todd. Jesus spoke of Noah. And he spoke of Lot. And he spoke of Lot's wife. He talked about Moses. He talked about Abraham. He talked about Abel. He talked about Daniel. These are not fairy tales. It's the word of God. I know that there are those who suggest that we not pay any attention to the Old Testament. But Jesus viewed the Old Testament as the word of God. Jesus viewed the, the, the characters of the Old Testament as the word of God. And then during his earthly ministry, Jesus viewed his own words as words from God. John's Gospel 7 and 16, Jesus said unto them, and Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but he is that sent me. Good God Almighty. And then in John's Gospel chapter 8, verse 26 through 28, he says, I have many things to say unto you and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I shall speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. And they understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father taught me, I speak these things I speak these things. So then the words that Jesus spoke as he walked this earth, Jesus viewed his own words as God's truth. And then as Jesus was about to depart, while he was in the upper room with his disciples, he promised the 11 that though that through them, the rest of the world would the rest of God's word would be revealed. He said to them in John's gospel chapter 14 and verse 26, uh, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Jesus said this in John's gospel chapter 15 verse 26 and 27, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. What is he saying here? Not only was the Old Testament God's truth, not only uh, is the Gospels, are the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, God's truth, but the rest of the New Testament, praise the Lord, from Acts through Revelation is also God's truth. So the entire Bible is God's truth. And the truth of God, hallelujah, will make you free. Somebody shout amen. The Bible says in John 8 and 32, says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see, the devil wants to keep people in bondage. The devil wants to pull you down. But I'm here to tell you today that the gospel is designed to set you free. There is nothing like the word of God. There is nothing like living for the God of the Bible. Hallelujah. Jesus said the thief cometh not. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I heard him say I am come. That they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus came to give us joy. 
Can I get a witness? Jesus came to set us free. Jesus came to make us holy. And with all the forces of the world lining up against him, Hollywood is falling in line. The politicians are falling in line. All these things are coming against the church. But I want you to know that in 2020, even though the battle will be hot, there's going to be a tremendous victory because God has anointed the true believer. Believers have nothing to fear. I heard Paul say, if God be for us, then who can be against us? The only thing that we have to fear is not being sanctified. Because if we're not sanctified, then we're not ready. No matter how talented one may be, no matter how gifted one may be, it's time to get sanctified. Ooh, Lord, that's a word that you don't hear much of anymore. All we hear now, we hear about, Lord, have mercy, unconditional love. We hear all about God being a God of grace. And yes, he is. And I'm glad for his grace, but he's still calling us to sanctification. He's still saying, you've got to come out of that which you know is not right. If you have somebody preach wooden in your life, if there's a relationship, if there's an activity that's independent and separate from God's truth, oh, tonight we ought not to carry it into 2020. Why don't you make up your mind that you're going to leave it in 2019? Thank you, Jesus. If we leave it in 19, there's going to be an increase, an increase of glory, an increase of power, and an increase of might. The Lord showed me the power of God. He adds weight to our words. He gives us power even in the way we walk. He gives us the ability to hold up under pressure. There's no promise that there won't be pressure. In fact, there will be. But I'm glad that we serve a God who gives us power to hold up under pressure. Paul said, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. That is, after the devil has attacked you, after the enemy have tried to pull you down. Paul said, just keep on standing. I wonder, do I have anybody here who has made up in their minds that in 2020, I'm going to stand for Jesus. I'm going to stand for the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to preach to you now. I want to preach to you about you standing for him before I preach to you about him doing for you. He is God. He's looking for somebody who will be a soldier in the army of the Lord. He don't need another cool preacher. He's not looking for another pretty evangelist or prophetess or another suave, hallelujah, slick preacher. God's looking for warriors who don't mind getting their hands dirty, who don't mind rolling up their sleeves, who don't mind swimming upstream, who will declare, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. Yeah! What if somebody walk away? What if someone stop attending the church? Who cares? The Lord is our battle axe. He's our comforter. 
in the time of a storm. He's the one who make ways for us. He's the one who open doors for us. And I see Jesus in the upper room. He had just finished, hallelujah, washing the disciples' feet. After that, they had the communion. And when it was all over, the Lord lifted up his eyes and Jesus began to pray. He said, oh, Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Oh, Lord, sanctify me. Do I have anybody who want to be sanctified? If you want to be sanctified, throw up your hands, cry out to him, Lord, 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 sanctify me, take away everything that's not like you, take away everything that's not right, let me hear you praise him, let me hear you give him glory. Let me hear you praise him. Woo! Woo! Sanctify. Sanctify my mind. Sanctify. Sanctify my feet. Sanctify. Sanctify my thoughts. Sanctify. Sanctify my dreams. Sanctify my goings. Sanctify my comings. Oh, Lord. Sanctify. Woo. Well, how, how, how are you going to do it? Sanctify me through the word, through the word, through the word. Not through that stuff Oprah's talking about, but through the word of God. Not through the stuff the five percenters are talking about, but through the word of God. Not through the Quran, but, uh, and, uh, but through the word of God. Not through the Book of Mormon, but it's the Bible. The Bible. God's truth is the sanctifying agent. And as you get sanctified, you find yourself losing certain appetites. As the Lord sanctifies you, certain cravings, they just go away. You just don't want, I don't want it. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to be like that. Well, you were like that. Well, I got sanctified. When you're sanctified, what attracts you changes. When you're sanctified, what you dream about changes. When you get sanctified, what you want changes. I want the Lord to sanctify me. Hey, we have any young people here who want to be sanctified. Sanctified on the college campus. Woo! Sanctified in the neighborhood. A sanctified young person. Let me hear the young people who want to be sanctified. Give God praises. Woo! I wonder in my clothes because 2020 is around the corner. Do I have any men here uh, who want to be a sanctified man? Oh! Oh, if you want to be a sanctified man, oh Lord, run down to the altar. I want to be Lord, I want to be a sanctified man. I like what you said. I don't want to be a hip-hop man. I don't want to be a worldly man. I don't want my pants hanging off my rear end. 
I don't want to act like uh, I'm a gangster. I'm not in the game. I want to be a sanctified man. Lift your hands, brethren, brothers. Just lift your hands and cry out to the Lord. And tell the Lord, sanctify me. Oh, ah, Lord, make me holy. Ah, Lord, change my mind. Hallelujah. Let me take care of my family. Let me treat my children right. Let me be an example in the community. Let me be straight. Let me be drug free. Let me walk with my back straight. Let me walk with my head up. Good God Almighty, sanctify me. Clean up my ears. Sanctify me. I want to come out of the fraternities. I want to come out of the gang. I want to come out of the mess. I want to come out of the muck and the mire. Sanctify me, Lord. I want to see if I see any men crying out to God. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Sanctify me, Lord. Sanctify my mind. Woo! I keep going back to the mind. Sanctify my mind. Sanctify my heart. Oh. Sanctify my walk. Sanctify my talk. Sanctify me. I want to tell you something, fellas. Depending upon the camera shot, they might show your face on the television and your co-workers may see you. I want to see how many men want to be sanctified to the point where they're not ashamed of Jesus Christ. My God, you ought to praise him like you're not ashamed. You ought to praise him like you're not ashamed. You're not ashamed. I want them to see me. I want them to see me because I'm growing. I'm moving up. I'm a saved man. I identify with Jesus Christ. I'm on the Lord's side. Let me hear you, brothers. Let me hear you. Let me hear you, brothers. God's truth. God's truth. God's truth. Let me hear you. God's truth. 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 Bring you out in 
It'll set you free. It'll set your soul on fire. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Wait a minute, man. I want to I wanna hear the man praise the Lord without the music overriding. Let me. pull a switcheroo right fast hallelujah I want you right quick to run to your seat and I need a few women who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ I said you got to move fast ladies meet me on the altar if you're hungry for the Lord's truth Woo! Lord, I'm gonna make it. Good God Almighty, I'm gonna take it in the name of the Lord. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. In the way maker, ladies, won't it lift you up? Won't it pick you up? Turn you around. Won't it place your feet on a solid foundation? Ain't the Lord good? And I wonder, do I have any ladies who know that the Lord is good? You know that God is good. If you know he's good, let me hear you praise him. If you know he's good, let me hear you raise your voice and give God praise all over this house. Ah! I want to hear the lady say, Lord, sanctify me. Lord, sanctify me. Lord, sanctify me. Lord! Do I have anybody who want God's truth? You love God's truth. Let me hear you say God's truth. God's truth.
you now Oh Lord Make your way Back to your seats I have Just one or two minutes I want you to know Every lady And every man Who got up to come down To identify with God You're gonna get a special blessing Oh Lord you see, because the Lord moves toward you like you move toward Him. And if you move toward God, He will move toward you. We're getting ready in a few minutes, hallelujah, to begin to pray. But I wonder, do I have anybody in here who's glad that they're saved? Who's glad that they're sanctified? And you got it? in your heart hallelujah Woo! if you got it in your heart you notice I haven't asked you to say anything to your neighbor the whole sermon and guess what I'm not going to ask you now but if you have it in your heart you ought to say it's in my heart in my heart this thing is not superficial this thing is not surface, but it's now in my heart. Oh, Lord, wave your hand if you can say, Preacher, it's down in my heart. I'm holy, I'm holiness down through and through. It's who I am. I ain't going back. I'm not giving up. It's in my heart. It's deep, deep, deep down in my heart. Let me tell you that it's deep, deep, deep down in my heart. Let me hear you say deep, 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 deep way down. Deep down in my heart. I got his love. Deep, 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 way down, down deep, 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 deep down. Let me hear you sing deep, 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 deep down. I got his love. I got his love. And I'll tell you that is. For the last time deep, deep, deep down. Everybody sing deep, deep, deep down. Let me hear you say deep, deep, deep down.
Happy New Year!
Let me tell you. 